Hey, this is chapter four. No, not chapter four. Unit four, energy in living things. And in the section 4.1, we're going to be talking about an intro to photosynthesis and cellular respiration, which is essentially what this unit is about. So let's do that. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the fact that energy in living things is all derived from the sun. What a weird way to say that all energy on earth comes from the sun, particularly that energy in living things. Now, there are some exceptions to this, particularly in places where the sun doesn't shine. But for our purposes today, we're going to talk about places where the sun shines and these processes like photosynthesis and cellular respiration are taking place. And so we got a couple other words to talk about here too. They are autotroph and heterotroph. The word troph essentially means feeding. Auto means self. And so autotrophs are self-feeding organisms, in, meaning that they are able to use the sunlight in order to create their own food, which is going to be glucose through the process of photosynthesis. And heterotrophs, these are organisms that have to eat other things, hence the word heterotroph, other feeders. And so they have to eat other things in order to get energy. They are basically taking the sun's energy that the plant gathered and getting that by eating the plant or by eating things that eat plants. You get the idea. So those two words, heterotrophs, autotrophs. Moving on, talking about ATP. ATP is pretty important. We've talked about it a little bit. We said that ATP or adenosine triphosphate is the cell's energy currency. What do I mean by that? It's a real simple way of saying that uh, when the cell uses energy or when there, there's energy that's necessary for a particular cellular task, ATP is probably going to be doing that thing. Now, we're not going to get into how that energy works in this class or where that energy comes from. You just need to know that there's a lot of energy stored in this ATP molecule, and the body uses ATP in order to do myriad different things, muscle contractions, all kinds of other things that I can't think of for some reason. Now, an ATP is uh, made of three different pieces, an adenine, which is a nitrogenous base, a ribose, which is a five-carbon sugar, and not one, but three phosphates. This sounds like a nucleotide because it is. ATP is a nucleotide. Not important. You just need to know that it's made of adenine, ribose, and three phosphates. If it was only two phosphates, it would be called ad adenosine diphosphate. Save that for later. Photosynthesis. Here is the equation for photosynthesis. And so um, as far as your memorization of this, how do, how do I want you to memorize it? The numbers are not as important, particularly the big numbers, um, especially the big numbers like 6CO2, 6H2O. I'm not all that important. That, or I'm not all that concerned that you get that because I'm not concerned with you knowing how to balance equations. Not a big idea at this level, especially in a biology class. Um, but CO2 is a thing, right? So that too is important there. And uh, another way of saying CO2, of course, is carbon dioxide. I'll never say carbon dioxide in class. But... You, just so you know what it is, H2, of course, is water. Those two things are the reactants in this reaction, and they combine using the sun's energy. So where it says photosynthesis, a lot of times what you'll see is like the word sunlight or energy written there or like a little beam, like this sunshine beam that you see here. And that's just meaning that light is necessary for this reaction. You could almost say that light is like a catalyst. And the products of this is going to be glucose, which is C6H12O6, and oxygen. Oxygen is a byproduct of this reaction. And so, yes, definitely have this reaction memorized. I would say memorize it backwards and forwards. That'll make sense in just a second. There are two reactions in photosynthesis, the light-dependent reaction and the Calvin cycle there on the right. Sometimes you'll see the Calvin cycle called the light-independent reaction. Not really a name that took on like you think it would because it's pretty descriptive. But for some reason, we like calling it Calvin. So we keep calling it Calvin cycle. That's what we're going to call it in this class. I'm going to give you quick definitions for this. In this picture, I'm going to give you a copy of this picture in class because I think this picture is really good at giving you a basic overview of what's going on without getting too complicated. Uh, these these uh, two reactions can get as complicated as you possibly can imagine. And so um, we're going to keep it pretty much above the weeds as opposed to being down in the weeds. We're going to get a little bit in the weeds just because I think it's fun. But we're going to mostly stay above them. All right, so uh, quick, easy definitions for these two things. Light-dependent reaction, of course, it involves light, is dependent upon light. And it is happening on the thylakoid membrane in the chloroplast. Important, we're going to talk more about chloroplast tomorrow, or in 4.2. And so this reaction, in this reaction, water is split. 
so that high energy electron carriers and ATP can be created. Oxygen is a byproduct. Now you may be like, what did you just say? Well, we're going to get into it a little bit more in 4.2. High energy electron carriers and ATP uh, are made and oxygen is a byproduct and water is split in order for that to occur. Good. We're gonna, that's, uh, that is light dependent reaction. And then Calvin cycle. Uh, notice on this picture that the Calvin cycle and the light dependent reaction are linked, right? The, there's things that are going into the Calvin cycle and those things are kind of look like they're, they've been emptied out, right? And they're going back into the light dependent reaction and they seem to be circling that ATP and NADPH. So um, that is the thing. NADPH is that high energy electron carrier that I mentioned just a few seconds ago. And so what do we have for the Calvin cycle? First, Calvin cycle takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast, which is the open space that's in there, everything that's not a thylakoid, essentially. And in this reaction, CO2 molecules are fixed. We're going to talk about what that means later. It's a process called carbon fixation. CO2 molecules are fixed uh, using those electron carriers, using NADPH, using ATP, in order to create a glucose molecule. And so that is photosynthesis. You can see there at the top, H2O, CO2 go in. Down there at the bottom, O2 is red because it's a byproduct. We call it a byproduct because it's like kind of like the thing that's given off, and it's not the, the thing that you're trying to make. Uh, oxygen can be used by plants, of course, and obviously it's used by us. So it's not a bad thing. It's just we call it a byproduct. And then, of course, glucose there on the right. That is the most important product of this whole thing. Moving on. Cellular respiration. Remember I said no, that backwards and forwards? You kind of need to because the products of cellular respiration are the reactants for photosynthesis. If you know this reaction one way, you know it the other. Except for the fact that notice I put ATP there at the end. And so uh, glucose and oxygen go into this reaction, CO2, H2O, and ATP go out. Remember in photosynthesis we put energy in in the form of sunlight and cellular respiration energy comes out in the form of ATP because ATP is the cell's energy currency. Where is this taking place? It's taking place in the mitochondria. And so I have that little mitochondria there. You see with glucose, oxygen going in, CO2, water coming out, and, of course, energy there. There are three reactions in cellular respiration. What are they? Here they are. There are three main reactions in cellular respiration. Again, if you want to get in the weeds of this, this is incredibly complex. But we're not getting complex. We're staying simple. We're going to stay simple. Three reactions. And you can pretty much drive this on your own. Glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose. Glyco, sugar, or gly glucose, lysis, break, right? Glucose is breaking into two pyruvate molecules in glycolysis. Where are they going? Well, let's follow the arrow. They're going to the Krebs cycle. What's the Krebs cycle doing? Well, it's breaking down pyruvate in order to make electron carriers. How do we know they're electron carriers? Well, look at the little box that says electrons carried by NADH and FADH2. Those are electron carriers. I thought we just talked about electron carriers. We did, but it was a different one. It was called NADPH. We're going to pretend that the P stands for photosynthesis. It doesn't. We're going to pretend that it does, right? And so we're going to, NADH is for cellular respiration, FADH2. It's kind of the also ran electron carrier, but it's still important. We don't talk about them anyway. Necessary for life. And those electron carriers are really important for that, for uh, the Krebs cycle, or that's the product for the Krebs cycle. And that is happening in the matrix of the mitochondria. I didn't say where glycolysis happens. Glycolysis happens in the cytosol, or that's what this picture says. Or you could say cytoplasm, that's fine. And glycolysis is uh, something that all living things do. And so that's something important to go back and write down for glycolysis. Sorry, I missed that. I need to write that down. So glycolysis, glucose into two pyruvate, Krebs cycle, pyruvate into electron carriers. And then the third reaction, electron transport chain. Its job is to use those electron carriers in order to make ATP. Now the necessary, and this happens on the inner membrane of the mitochondria, both the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain need oxygen. So these two reactions do not occur if oxygen is not there, if oxygen is not there. There's other thing that happens. We'll talk more about that in a later video.